Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at some of the hidden gems in this new release of Photoshop CC. I'm going to start with some enhancements that were made to artboards. So I'll select the New option from the Start menu, and then for Document Type, select Artboard. We can see now that we have an option for background contents. We can choose white, black, transparent, or other. Selecting other will give us the color picker, so we can select any color that we want to for our background, or we could click the swatch here in order to access the color picker as well. When I click OK, I get a new artboard with this background. But if we take a look at my Layers panel, you'll notice that there's really no background layer that appears to be red, because this background layer is actually a special layer. If you want to change the background color at any time, you simply click on the artboard itself, and in the Properties panel, you can change the artboard background color. So in this case, I'll go ahead and change it to Transparent. Now I'll select the V key to get the Move tool, and click on the edge of the artboard so that I can create a secondary artboard. And you'll notice that I can change the background of this artboard independently of the other one. So in this case, I'll make it black. Or if I wanted to, I could select multiple artboards using the Layers panel, and then select the background color for multiple artboards and change them all at one time. So I think that the ability to view the transparency as well as assign these background colors will be very, very useful. Now the second hidden gem also has to do with artboards. In this case, I want to be able to duplicate multiple layers from one document's artboards onto another document's artboards. So let's just quickly add a few elements here. I will tap the U key to get the Shape tool, and then I'll just create maybe three shapes on this artboard. Now let's say I create a new document, and this document is also going to be an artboard document. And maybe I have created two or three different artboards. Instead of having to view both of these documents that I want to drag and drop between, all I need to do is return back to that initial document. We'll select those three layers. And now when I choose Layer, and then Duplicate Layers, not only could I select a specific document, so maybe that Untitled 2 document, but I can also designate which artboard I want to copy those layers to. So once I click OK, we can see that they've been copied to that second artboard. So while this might not seem like a big deal when you only have two documents with a limited number of artboards, you can imagine when your documents get very complex with a large volume of artboards, this can be very handy to duplicate to exactly the artboard that you need those layers. Okay, the next hidden gem has to do with the Capture app. That's Adobe CC Capture that you can access on your mobile phone. And you can use that app to capture things like brushes or colors. You can create shapes. You can create color lookup tables as well as patterns. And Photoshop now supports not only the color lookup tables, but also the patterns. So if we look at my Libraries panel, I have created a library called Looks. These are looks that I created with the Capture app that were automatically synchronized through the Creative Cloud to Photoshop. And when I select any of these looks, you can see that it changes the entire look of my image based on the color lookup table, which is an adjustment layer, so it's completely flexible and non-destructive. I could change blend modes, opacities, or just as quickly decide that I want to try a different look on this image. So definitely you want to check out the Capture CC app if you want to create color lookup tables to use not only in Photoshop, but also Premiere and After Effects. If I wanted to add a pattern, I can also use Capture CC to create patterns. I have another library here called Tree Patterns. So this was just a photograph of a tree that I turned into a number of different patterns. Again, just clicking on that pattern in the library automatically brings up the Pattern Fill dialog so that I can change the scale of this pattern if I want to, making it larger or smaller. And again, it's all non-destructive. We can see in the Layers panel that is simply a Pattern Fill layer. Of course, you can add as many of these as you want, change blend modes and opacity, even mask them. Like I said, everything here is non-destructive. So you definitely want to check out the Capture app. 
The next hidden gem also has to do with libraries. I don't know if this ever happened to you, but sometimes when I would share my libraries with other people that I was collaborating with, sometimes they threw away or removed some of the elements in my library. Well, now I don't have to worry about that happening anymore. Let's go ahead and select collaborate from this library. You'll notice now that when you're taken to the website at, to invite collaborators, you have an option here when you enter in an email address to let that person edit the library or restrict them so that they can only view that library. I'm pretty sure that for many of us, that will just give us a little peace of mind when we are collaborating with large groups of people as far as who can control those assets. And finally, if I open up a document here that has multiple artboards in it. We can see some of the new export options. If I choose File and then Export, we can now export our artboards to files. And we have the option there to include the background in Export if we want to. If instead we want to export these to PDF, when we select Artboards to PDF, not only can we include the background in Export, we can also include an ICC profile as well as include the Artboard name on each one of the pages. So there you go, a number of hidden gems in Photoshop. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.